Hi, everybody. Joe here from Show to Speak Photography. Very nice to see your smiling face again here on YouTube. So, white balance. White balance is probably the most important setting on your camera and probably one of the most often overlooked setting on the camera. So why is white balance so crucial? Well, part of the job, probably the primary job of your camera, right, is to reproduce colors, right? So the camera reproduces colors by activating pixels, and those pixels are either red, green, or blue. Now, when you activate all three, R, G, and B, red, green, and blue, the resulting color is white. Okay, so if the camera can accurately reproduce white, it can accurately reproduce every other color in your scene. So that's how the camera knows that my red shirt is red because it knows what the value, the proper value for white is. And white balance, auto white balance, works wonderfully until it doesn't. What can confuse auto white balance? Well, if there's a scene with multiple shades of white, for instance, and the camera doesn't know which is the proper white, it can switch from object to object, and the colors will actually change from photo to photo. And if you've ever seen this happen, it is a result of having incorrect white balance. So white balance is crucial. So let me show you a few examples of when that happens. And then I'm going to show you how to manually set your white balance so that you get perfect color reproduction every time. Let's get started. Okay, so let's take a look at this photo here. Now, in this situation, the camera needs to decide what exactly in this photo is white. Now, you may notice there's a lot of things in this photo that's white. For example, the jersey is white, the boards back here are white, the ice is white, the Golden pads are white, the stick is white, and they're all slightly different shades of white. So what's going to happen in a situation like this is the camera might decide, well, the jersey's white. And look how the white balance changed. But the next picture, the camera might look at the ice and say, well, the ice is white. And now look. Or maybe a few shots down the road, it picks the boards. And you see how every time it chooses something different, the color of the image changes, sometimes slightly, sometimes dramatically. All right, so what's happening here is if we took a series of shots, over a series of shots, we would have color changes from shot to shot to shot, and our photography would be inconsistent. Okay, and so that's one of the downsides to auto white balance, especially in a situation where there are many choices as to what is actually white. So what needs to happen here is you need to decide what's the most important value to you uh, for your whites, or you use a manual white balance with a checker using something like an 18% gray card or a neutral color. Okay, so let me show you how that happens. Okay, so we are here on the back of our Nikon camera. This is a Z6 II, but it doesn't really matter which camera you're using in the Z series or any other DSLR. This will work in a very similar fashion. So in terms of adjusting white balance on your Nikon Z series camera, there's no white balance button on most Nikon Z series cameras. You use the I menu. Now, if you have a Z9, that's an exception. You do have a white balance button on the Z9. So we're gonna press the I button on the back of the camera. And you'll see the menu comes up and white balance is in fact one of the options. Now I've customized my I menu. So if you're still using the factory defaults, your I menu may look different than mine and you may have different choices, but you should have white balance. So you can see using auto white balance, auto white balance cannot resolve correct white balance in this scene. So what we need to do here is we need to set a custom white balance. So the way to do that is Click OK when you have white balance selected in the I menu, and you'll see a bunch of choices. And as we scroll through them, you're going to see the colors actually change because we're changing the white balance. And that one right there gets us kind of close, and that's way off. And 
Ooh, a little better. I know. Kelvin. This is K for Kelvin. This is if you were going to dial in the correct color temperature on your own because you knew what it was. And that, that's typical of, like, say, sports photographers where you shoot hockey every night in the same arena and you know what the white balance is and you can dial it in. Now, if you get over to pre, you're going to see that it fixes it. And I'm going to tell you why because I've already dialed in the correct settings. But if I go to D2... Uh, you'll see that it's incorrect. So when you go to pre, you'll see there's a little arrow down, and you can select the arrow down, and you're going to see one through six. So you can set up to six custom white balances. So I'm going to go over to D2 because I haven't used D2 yet, and I want to show you how to do this. So I need something neutral now to tell the camera what white is. Now, I'm going to do this the right way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use a color checker card. So I'm going to use the spider color checker. Uh, color checker photo this is called. I'm just going to place this in the scene. And I'm going to use the 18% gray. And now all I need to do is press OK with one of the D options selected. And then we're now we should be on pre and you may be on pre 1 or pre 2 or it could be all the way up to pre 6. And that doesn't matter. What you're going to do now is you're going to press and hold OK with the pre uh, option selected. And you can press and hold it. And now you're going to see this yellow box come up, and you're going to see pre with a number flashing in the top right. Okay, now all you need to do is press OK to measure, and data is acquired. And now the camera has correctly determined what the white balance should be for this image. And if we take the checker away, you'll see we have perfect white for our image. Now, I do understand that not everyone has a color checking card. So I'm going to show you something that you can easily do to obtain proper white balance in a pinch if you need to. If you happen to have one of those lens cleaning cloths from Nikon, you'll notice that they are gray. Now, they are not perfect neutral 18% gray, but they're pretty close. They're probably somewhere around 20%-ish gray, but they're pretty close. And I'll show you what it looks like. And so all I've done is taken my Nikon cleaning cloth and I've draped it over uh, what I want. And now I'm going to hold down pre, hold the OK button down, and I'm going to move this over to make sure that I'm not on any of the seams from the folded um, lens cleaning cloth. And I'm just going to hit OK. And data is acquired. Now let's take it away. And really good, right? Really good. And that's with one of those free Nikon lens cleaning cloths. I believe they also come with um, the Nikon lens cleaning kits that you can purchase. So let's just take a look at the difference between the white balance card and that little hack using our gray lens cleaning cloth. All right, so I brought these two photos into Lightroom so we can compare the two, one against the color checker card and the second one against our lens cleaning cloth. Okay, and let's see how we did. So this is the one from our color card checker and this second one here is our lens cleaning cloth. They are so similar I almost can't tell the difference between the two of them. Let's take a side-by-side -side look. And there we are, the two of them side-by-side. -side. So we have on the left, that would be our lens cleaning cloth. And on the right is the color card checker. And they look almost identical. So that hack works pretty well if you have one of those Nikon gray lens cleaning cloths. That's the microfiber cloth. Looks like that. So take a look around and keep that with you if you ever need to set your white balance on the fly. Let's take a look at a few other examples. Okay, so you notice we did have a bunch of different options and I just want to go through these options with you quickly. So White Balance Auto does a pretty good job most of the time. And you can almost always use this. And you can tweak it a little bit 
to customize the colors that you want. But it is so good that I don't really think most of the time that's necessary, but you do have a couple of different options there where you could tweak it. We can use reduced warms or keep warms or just neutral the way it is. And that's the one I would recommend that you use. Okay, as we go along, we have natural light auto, direct sunlight, and you see the change in color temperature there. Cloudy for your cloudy days. Shade for a shady day. Okay, that's incandescent for your old style home light bulbs, which we really don't use anymore because everything is now LED. Uh, there's your fluorescence. We don't see much of that anymore either because of LEDs. That's white balance for your flash. As I mentioned, this is when you choose your own color temperature and dial it in yourself. So this is assuming you know what the color temperature value is going to be, and you're going to dial that in on your own. And of course, as we know, we have our presets that we can do custom measurements with to do a proper white balance when basically everything else has failed and we need consistent shots across the board. Or as I mentioned, you're doing product photography or something along those lines where accurate color reproduction is a must. Okay, so I just wanted to show you quickly what that lens cleaning kit looks like. It's made by Nikon and inside there is a lens pen, they call it, with a brush on one, on one side. And there is a smaller lens brush over here. And then inside you'll find that gray cleaning cloth, which is also conveniently somewhere around the neighborhood of about 20% gray. So it's not perfect, but it's so close that it's going to get you really great results in a jam. Okay, folks, thanks for watching. If anything in this video has helped you out, please help me out by hitting like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you get notified of future updates to the channel. If you watch this channel, you know. If you leave a comment, I'm going to do my best to answer. So, hey, let me know what your thoughts are about white balance. Let me know if you have a question. Or, hey, just say hi. I'll probably say hi back. I try my best, like I mentioned, to answer as many comments as I can. So, hey, thanks for watching. I appreciate you, and I will see you next time, YouTube. Happy holidays, and if I don't see you before then, Happy New Year. Bye-bye.